presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. The Indians made it back-to-back wins on the road for the first time this season behind the right arm of Justin Masterson. A couple key hits and a lockdown effort from the bullpen. Now the Tribe is in position for their third straight series win and could make it nine out of ten overall. Lefty T.J. House will try to keep the momentum rolling next on Sports Time Ohio. Deep in the heart of Texas, it's the Indians and the Rangers finally putting the wraps on this four-game series. The Indians try to make it three out of four against Texas. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Indians are winning baseball games right now because, A, they're scoring runs, but, B, the pitching has been tremendous. And this is basically two times through the starting rotation where each guy is taking the ball and getting deep into the ball game. They're starting to feed off each other, and it's really fun to watch because when you go out there and you get on a roll, the Indians have been scoring early, so it takes a little pressure off the starters. They've been able to go out there and relax. They've been able to pitch very well. They've been pitching deep into the ball game, you know, going into the seventh inning and uh, five times, you know, in the last ten games. So they're feeding off each other. They're doing a great job, and they're getting some timely hitting, so it's going hand in hand. And that's why you, you, your record is so good. Yeah, T.J. House will go tonight for the Indians. If they win tonight, who knows, they could creep up even closer to Detroit. Indians just three back of the front-running Tigers now in the American League Central Division. But Ron Washington and the Rangers will have their say before this one's all said and done. Adrian Beltre and company ready to take their hacks. We'll see if the Indians can win the series outright. The play-by-play is next. you buy mcdonald's i'm loving it buy your local toyota dealers visit buyatoyota.com toyota let's go places buy paninis get overstuffed at paninis bar and grill and buy jeep visit jeep.com to learn more
And we welcome you into Globe Life Park here in Arlington, Texas. A lot of rain earlier today here in the Metroplex area, but it looks like we're going to have a beautiful night for baseball as the Indians and the Rangers wrap up this four game wraparound series. The Indians try to make it three out of four behind TJ House. Texas will send young right hander Nick Martinez to the mound. The Indians come in just three games back in Detroit. Indians 32 and 31 now on the year. And the Tigers check in at 33 and 26. For the Texas Rangers, they're 31 and 32, but a different story in the AL West where they find themselves in fourth place in eight games back of front running Oakland. Here's how the Central Division standings shape up this afternoon. And of course, the Indians will leave tonight, fly to Kansas City, and open up a two game series against the Royals tomorrow night before they head to Boston for a four game series next weekend. And the Kansas City Royals already uh, rained out for tonight's ball game. So that's, uh... Meanwhile, the Tigers are taking on the Chicago White Sox tonight. We'll keep you updated on that game as we go along. Texas takes the field. Let's take a look at the starting nine for Terry Francona tonight. Brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne will lead it off for the Indians. Then it's as Dribble Cabrera followed by Michael Brantley. Jason Kipnis will back clean up. Lonnie Chisinau staying red hot with a hit in 18 of his last 20. And then Carlos Santana followed by David Murphy who's had a good series against his old club. Jason Giambi gets his second start in the series. And George Kateris will get his first start in the series batting ninth. Well, 23-year-old Nick Martinez on the mound who is one and two. Uh, that loss uh, came his last outing against the Baltimore Orioles was the first loss as a starter. He made this team out of spring training and never been higher than a ball. So uh, coming into this year, so it really is a, a pretty good story. At 23 years old, first time he has faced the Indians. Left-handers are hitting 314 against him, so look for the lefties to hopefully do some damage tonight. Let's check out the defense behind him. It'll be the Kia defense. It'll be Chu in left field, Robertson in center, Rios is in right, Beltre at third, Andrus is uh, short, Sardinas is at second, Murphy is at first, Torino's behind the plate. Jim Wolf will be calling the balls and strikes tonight. Lance Barksdale at first. Mark Ripperger is at second. And the crew chief, Gary Cedarstrom, is down at third. So we're ready to go tonight as Michael Bourne strides to home plate. Bourne in the series has gone two for 14. It is pretty amazing when you look at Nick Martinez, who was named to the opening day starting rotation on March 26th, despite having not spent in a single day in big league spring training camp. Yeah, that's, I think, goes to show you how the situation of the injuries really came back and it hurt Texas right from the start. Game time temperature 80 degrees as Bourne looks at a ball up high. And they count 2-0. and oh. Martinez just did catch the top of the strike zone. The catcher, Robinson uh, Torinos, has caught five of his six starts. That's down low, three and one. Moore pops a foul back out of play. In addition to the interesting story about Martinez, who, as we said, didn't spend a day in big league spring training camp, yet made the opening day rotation. The Rangers drafted him out of Fordham. He pitched 26 innings in relief the whole time he was in college in three years. He was a shortstop. But Texas saw enough in that strong throwing arm to make it an 18th round selection out of Fordham. And he's the first Fordham product to make it to the big leagues since uh, Pete Harnish, who ended his career back in 01. Pete Harnish with Baltimore, I remember. 
I think he also pitched with Boston. Maybe Houston. Yes, he did. That's right. As Dribble Cabrera steps in after the leadoff walk to Bourne. Bourne has six stolen bases on the year. Cabrera rifles one to left field. That's a base hit. He couldn't even see it. Chu never saw the ball. And all the way to third aggressively goes Michael Bourne. Down to second base goes Cabrera. Uh, oh, some great heads up early base running by the Indians. It really was. Chu lost it. If you look out there, you can see the shadows. He's got to play deep enough. He's looking into a sun sunshine. And that was a line drive off the bat of Cabrera. Now watch Chu. He doesn't see it. And Bourne takes advantage of it, knowing that Chu's breaking backwards. And now watch the good hustle by Bourne and then the follow up by Cabrera is outstanding to go second and third and nobody out. Well done. They'll give credit to his dribble Cabrera for a single and he goes to second on the throw to third. And the Indians have two in scoring position with nobody out now for Michael Brantley. Right now, if I was Chu, I'd move up a little bit and play in the shadows so you could see it. At least he's got to shade his eyes to see the ball. And, you, and hope Brantley doesn't drive it over your head. But, you know, you got to come in at least maybe five or six more feet to get that shadow there so you can see. Michael pulls it foul on the count quickly 0 and 2. It's only going to last for about five minutes and then it'll be gone. You just got to take your chances and come into the shade. Rangers have done a pretty good job. They pitched Brantley tough in the series two for 14 with a double. Yeah I find it hard to believe too. you look at the numbers and Brantley 100 points lower on the road as far as uh, hitting goes. Down low Chirinos with a good stop behind the dish. There's the splits you were referring to Rick. Yeah big difference. And it's hard to believe because Michael's consistent usually no matter what he does but the hits aren't falling for him on the road like they are at home. Tribe trying to get out to the early lead here. And Martinez shot for the inside corner but missed. And it's two and two. Michael Bourne who walked is at third. Cabrera who singled and alertly followed Bourne. With the aggressive base running to get into scoring position. Up and away. And a full kill. Martinez born in Miami Florida. Brantley didn't chase and two walks in the inning the Indians have them loaded with nobody out and here comes Mike Maddox the Texas pitching coach. Yeah you don't want the young man to. He's he's walked two guys out of the first three so he wants to try and settle him down. He had three walks in his last start against Baltimore. That was in five and a third innings, and he also gave up nine hits, so he had a boatload of uh, base runners. Keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. A win tonight, the Indians win the series. Early offense has been a key to their recent success, as has been the starting pitching. And the Indians looking for some early offense right out of the gate. Bases loaded, nobody on, and Jason Kipnis will be the batter. Yeah, you couldn't set it up any better. First inning, bases loaded, nobody out. Indians have been tremendous with the bases loaded this year as a team batting 420. With less than two outs, even better, a 481 mark. Kipnis one for three so far this year with the bags juiced. Takes a strike. 
He's, he was throwing a lot of power, a lot of fastballs, and Maddox goes out there and what's the first pitch? Get him to slow it down and throw a breaking ball and get in the strike zone. Down in the dirt. Chernos obviously has to be alert with runners everywhere. He was able to block that one cleanly. It's out of plate on the left side and the count for ball and two strikes. Another one two. Just missed down and in. Boy, he's gone a couple times. Tried to do that once to uh, to Brantley. Tried to nail the inside corner, and there's our Nissan pitch tracker just in off the plate. It was a good two strike pitch though, and uh, both those guys just spit at that pitch. Two two pulled weakly toward first. He'll take the out at the bag, and the Indians get on the board first. Kipnis picks up his 14th RBI. Michael Bourne comes home from third, and the Indians lead it one to nothing. Well, even though he, he, he bounced it, at least everybody moves up. The run scores. You got second and third still with an opportunity now for Chisholm. Couldn't take a chance, just you have to get that first out. And Murphy just stepped on first base. So Lonnie Chisholm is having a good series, four for eight with a home run. And a line drive off the glove of Murphy in the right field. Cabrera scores. Brantley in the third. He'll stop there. Yeah, he was caught. He, he thought he was going to catch the ball. He couldn't take off. And it did go off the leather of Murphy. Yeah, McDonald's I'm loving it. Chisholm Hall remains sizzling. He is on fire in his ball. Line drive off the glove, and that's why you have to freeze. You can't get doubled off. Goes off the top, and, and, and uh, Brantley couldn't start up again to score, so it's first and third, but they get their second run home and give Chisholm his 20th RBI. Up comes Carlos Santana. to the strike Santana's swung the bat pretty well in the series going five out of eleven well left handers I told you hitting three fourteen off Martinez and uh, the Indians have enough left handers in that lineup he is going to face oh Santana takes and it's a called strike he's down 0 two Indians with a 2 0 lead here in the first, Rick. I was thinking with Donnie Murphy having to take over at first because Mitch Moreland is, is down, not on the DL yet, but looking at surgery options on his injured ankle. Moreland's 6 2, Murphy's 5 10. If Moreland's still in there, he might make that line drive catch. That could be true. And that's the way things have gone for Texas. Yeah, uh, they have had uh, a, a very difficult year all the way around, I think, right from spring training. They lead uh, Major League Baseball in both overall DL uses, which has been 18 times, and current players on the DL, which is at 12 right now. And, and that doesn't and more include to follow. Moreland, right? Moreland uh, was looking at reconstructive ankle surgery and got a second opinion where they they think they can do a a more minor procedure, and but he's still going to miss probably a month of action. Right. That's at best. One two pitch broke his back. Slowly chopped the first. They go to second. They get the out there, but they can't turn the double play. And the Indians have scored three times here in the first inning. Santana will pick up his 20th run batted in on the year. Let's go ahead and take a look at our injury report. Brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. 
Mitch Marlin, as we said, looks like he'll be out at least a month if he opts for that second opinion surgery. Rubnet Odor, who we saw get injured yesterday, he's able to pinch hit if needed today. They don't want him to throw for another couple of days. But the good news there on his injury to his shoulder is that it's not serious. Because when he left the field initially, it didn't look like we'd see him anytime soon. David Murphy looks at ball one outside. Now for Martinez, uh, the strike zone has moved around a little bit. He is uh, 12 balls and 12 strikes in his first 24 pitches. What you're talking about. More balls than strikes, but when you walk two out of the first three, that's usually going to be the case. Yeah, both come around to score. Murphy sends a drive deep down the right field line, but he's going to hook it foul. Not by much. That was a lot closer than I initially thought because David never really left the batter's box. That's how that's who I was watching. I always do when it's down the line. Look at the hitter. He'll pretty much tell you. It certainly had the distance. But he's been here enough and I'm sure hit a lot of those balls. Like that knowing it's going to be foul. Two one loop toward left field. Chu coming in fighting the sun makes the catch. And the inning is over. But the Indians take advantage of a couple of walks here in the first line. He chisholm all drives in one and the Indians lead it three to nothing. Washington tonight brought to you by Toyota. Daniel Robertson will lead it off. Then it's Elvis Andrews, followed by Shinsu Chu. Chu is the only left handed bat in the starting lineup tonight for Texas. Adrian Beltre, Alex Rios, and Donnie Murphy in the middle. Then it's Michael Joyce, Robinson, Chirinos, and Luis Sardinas. And we know TJ House always likes to get out there and work quickly. He doesn't waste any time, does he? No, working with George Kateris behind the plate tonight. He's a guy that gets the sign and goes right to work. Yeah, which is nice to see. A lot like Josh Tomlin. Robertson bangs one up the middle and it's through. Rangers get their leadoff man aboard. Check out the uh, 
the uh, Indians defense behind House tonight will be Brantley, Bourne, and Murphy in the outfield. On the infield from third to first, Chisinau, Cabrera, Kipnis, and Santana. As George Contreras gets the start behind the plate tonight. That note in the bottom left corner, important. In the last six games, only one error committed. So yeah, they've been that, playing much better defensively. And there's T.J. House making his fourth start. 0-1 record, 379. He's given up three home runs, but his last start against the Boston pitched a really good game. He just had nothing to show for it. He left leading three to one. He went five and two thirds innings, gave up six hits and just two runs. But a guy that pitches to contact. Indians finally held Elvis Andrus without a hit yesterday, ending his hitting streak against the Indians at 39 games. Just inside to TJ House. He's fallen behind here 2 0. Yeah, that was uh, quite a strength. First game of the series, he got it, uh, his hit in the last at bat of Friday night's game. We have to try and think because this is Monday and it's a wraparound series, and normally you're leaving on Sunday and traveling. Yeah. So it is. Uh, you got to think about what day it is. <laughs> Definitely unusual in the overall scheme of the schedule. Three and zero. Oh the count here. And that's ball four. So after the Indians. Had their first three reach to start the game. The first two reach for Texas. Well, the Indians have been playing better defense of late. We talked about that. Let's get downstairs to Katie with them. Yeah, Matt, they have been catching the ball, throwing the ball, and hitting the ball, which has led to them playing quality baseball for the first time this season. Some of the players told me earlier today that it's almost been like a snowball effect. It's taken pressure off the pitchers, then it's taken pressure off defense and hitting. Ultimately, the key in getting to this point, Matt, they said not panicking and continuing to just grind it out. Well, here's Shinsu Chu with two on, nobody out. And as I said before, the only left handed bat in the lineup tonight. Chu, one for 11 in the series. Swung out and missed. Good fastball from TJ House. Well, this is, you, you want to keep the guys off base uh, in Texas when you have Beltre and Rios. Because those are the guys that are doing all the damage for this Ranger team in the first six games of their homestand here. And TJ with another fastball. He spots it in there. Look out one and two. Choose a guy that's been struggling at the plate recently. They hit him third yesterday for the first time. Couldn't get him to chase, and it's two and two. Choose done much better against lefties this year, hitting 328 last year, batted just 215 against the Southpaws. Foul ball nailed Kateris right square in the mask. So TJ House trying to work out of some early trouble here with two on nobody out. Will go a long way if he can retire Chu. Reached for it, pulls it, and it's going to be an easy out. Runners will move to second and third, one away. Well, now you've got to face the 
and the two guys that have uh, really done the job for the six games. Beltre and Rios, through their first six games of this homestand, are hitting 467. 21 hits and 45 at bats. In for a first pitch strike. Swung on and missed. Ran it inside off the plate. Adrian Beltre's. One of only five players in Major League history to hit 100 or more home runs with three different teams. The others are Daryl Evans, Reggie Jackson, Alex Rodriguez, and Jim Tomey. Down and in again, it's two and two. Beltre began his career with the Dodgers before going to Seattle. Spent a little time with Boston. A great addition to this Rangers team. 2 2 out of play. Now he's a guy that usually finds a way to get him in from third base with less than two outs because he will expand his strike zone. Rip foul, and I mean he almost took the head of Daniel wow. Robertson off. Wow. I mean, how look how close he is. I mean, you're looking at about 75 feet right there. Robertson pointing to his face because he missed time when he uh wow he had been down He ran into Alex Rios in a ball game earlier this year. That ball was by him by the time he hit the ground. Which is why he wears that protective device on the helmet. Extra. Piece. <laughs> Beltre's got him in the crosshairs. He's like, hey, remember, I've got a bad cheek over here. Well, there's one where you might, you may want to go over to Gary Pettis and hide behind <laughs> him. Use him as a blocker. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, Gary, why don't you come in here and talk to me a little bit and just <laughs> sort of shade me? Breaking ball up and away, and TJ House is running kind of full to Beltre. Over 20 pitches now in the first with one out and Alex Rios waiting on deck. Two pitch. Chopped to short. That'll get a run home. Cabrera will throw out Beltre. Two down. He picks up his 29th RBI on the year as Robertson scores. And Anders moves to third. <laughs> Robertson, a big smile. He's like, I'm just lucky to score. I'm not getting killed. Here's Alex Rios with two down. Well, this is the guy you really want to be careful with. He's he's very good against left-handed pitching. He's the guy that can do damage to you. Not that you necessarily want to walk him, but you certainly want to pitch him tough. Because after him, the lineup goes down a lot. Just missed. Nailing the inside corner there, one and one. 
Now Rios is hit five straight. He's six for 11 in the series. And pitch. Swing and a miss. One and two. Good pitch. He came right back inside and he got Rios to chase after him. Doubled up. Smokes it foul. See if he tries to go outside with that fastball again. Nope, coming in and in with it. Off the plate. Evens the count. Well, they went back in there again, and you see that one. Rios was awfully quick on, it. and he didn't miss by much. That could have missed by about six inches. Now they're going away, and he just got a piece of it to stay alive. Runner at third, two down, and the 2 2 pitch. Jam job to short. Cabrera fields it cleanly and throws him out. Rangers get a run, but after an inning of play, it's the Indians three, Texas one. By the Cleveland Clinic. Call today for an appointment today. And by the Northeast Ohio Ford Dealers. 3-1 Cleveland as we go to the second inning. Tribe goes back to work. Jason Giambi to lead it off. And Nick Martinez misses outside for ball one. Tough time commanding his fastball in the first inning. And he comes out this one trying to hit it. There's a little two seamer he's able to throw for a strike. But you gotta 
you have to locate that four seamer. I don't care who you are. That, everything revolves off of that. Now Jason Giambi not in agreement with Jim Wolf. And the count evens a two and two. Out of play. I think the the thing that probably made Martinez attractive to Texas as he made his way through their system was his ability to throw a lot of strikes. In 2012, in 117 innings, he struck out 109 batters, walked only 37. Strikes out Giambi. There's strike out of the night, one down here in the second. Right now, take a look at the all-star balloting results to this point. Fox, your exclusive home for all-star balloting results tonight. Troy Tolowitzki with over 2 million votes at the shortstop spot. Yasiel Puig, Cuban sensation for the Dodgers. Adrian Gonzalez of L.A. We'll take a look at the American League results coming up later on. George Kateris. Homered in his first two at bats as a Cleveland Indian. And the king of the cow milkers. That's right. <laughs> he's got he's got his can to prove it. Martinez deals. Outside, he missed. And in and out of the glove of Robinson Chernos couldn't quite hold on to it. Came back, he got Giambi with the changeup. He comes back and throws another changeup here. Terrence had a good swing at it, but it just bounces out of the glove of Chirinos. It's this one a long way. Deep right field. Rios back. He's out of room. It's out of here. George Kateris with his third home run as a Cleveland Indian. Sending one to the upper deck in right field. And it's a 4-1 Cleveland lead. I'll tell you what. He had a very good swing at the pitch before that, Matt. It was a changeup. He was right on. And I think he comes back with a fastball and he doesn't miss it. There was a fastball. He gave him a little swing in room. And George has a nice short swing. He doesn't stride a lot. He gets the, the hands through the hitting area. And how about him? Three home runs, three ribbies. Nicely done. The Greek bomber continues. And now Michael Bourne steps in. He walked and scored in the first. He can do it all. Hits home runs, catches, milks cows. What, what do you want the guy to do? He'll do it. Farmer George. That one estimated at 419 feet. And Michael Bourne looks at a strike. They count one and two. to first. Murphy with the flip. And he beats Bourne to the bag. Two down. Well, in today's game, we're participating in the home run challenge. Every home run in this game raises $583 for prostate cancer research. And you can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. So George Kateris has, has us on the board here in the second inning tonight. Three for five as a Cleveland Indian. All three hits have left the yard.
As Dribble Cabrera with a little inside out swing down a left field line. He's headed for second base. He'll go in easily with a two out double, and he's two for two tonight. His sixth hit in the series. Well, yeah, how about he started out Friday night against you, Darvish, and had three consecutive hits. Right. He's closing out this series. He's two for two tonight, and look at that inside out swing. Taking it the other way, they're way off him. Now, he had a couple of balls he hit right into the strength of the defense. That's how you beat it. And going the other way, and he gets his 14th double. Now Michael Brantley who walked and came around to score in the first inning. Rick, I'm sure he's not the only pitcher we've ever seen do this, but it, it just it looks a little unusual to me. When Martinez comes to that set position, that front leg is so wide open toward home plate. When he comes to that set position, almost looks like he's got to do a lot of mechanical work to get back online when he comes home. You know, you just have to make sure you stay closed and not fly open. Front foot's going to be a little, you know, over towards the first base side. You just have to make sure you're stepping in and going to the plate and close it up as you start your delivery, which he does. You see how he goes from the full windup. That that left foot is all the way over mm -hmm. here anyway. He's open. Almost looks like he's rocking back towards first base when he comes set. He's walked Brantley for the second time tonight. And two on, two out for Jason Kipnis. And once again, pitching coach Mike Maddox out to the mound. Two innings, two trips. Well, uh, one, uh, two, three, four times. Make this now five out of his seven starts. He's walked three guys. That's the most he's walked this year, but we're only in the second inning here. And he already has three walks. And as I said, that has not been, he's not a wild pitcher in terms of his track record in the minor leagues, but this isn't the minor leagues, and he doesn't have a boatload of minor league experience. Right. I mean, you're learning at this level, it's a tough place to learn because there is really no room for error. You know, I think uh, guys in the minor leagues, they may swing. Uh, a little more freely down there than the, you got some discipline up here. If they see you're struggling, they're not going to help you out. Right at the bottom of the strike zone, one and one. This is one area where Jason Kipnis has really struggled this year. Two outs and runners in scoring position where he was very good last year. He only has one hit in 17 at bats. Down on the count now, one and two. This had a little slow chopper to first in the first that got a run home. Low and away. Two balls, two strikes. Terry Francona has pointed out that the Indians. In his estimation, have been more patient. They've been working counts, driving up pitch counts more often here of late. And it all goes hand in hand. You, you work the pitch count, you get yourself into better hitters' counts. More times than not, you'll get your pitch to hit at some point. Well, and they've been getting some key hits too. I, I'm not opposed to guys getting up there and getting after that first fastball. They say if it's what they're looking for. 
But these guys are patient enough. They have, you know, they're fourth in the league in walks, but now they have 233. Popped up foul and out of play. You know, this kid here, I mean, he's in the second inning and he has 55 pitches. 56. Two on, two out. Indians leading at four to one. The two-two pitch to Kipnis, and a full count. Well, they get a head start now. Boy, he has, uh, he has uh, had some trouble tonight finding the strike zone. Runners go. And the 3 2 is lined to right field to base hit. Rios trying to cut it off. Cabrera will score. Brantley around third. They're going to wave him home. Throw goes towards second. Brantley will score easily. Jason Kipnis with a two out, two run single, and the Indians have scored three more here in the second. They lead it six to one. That was a great read there by Mike Sarball because Rios held the ball. And I'll tell you what, he never stopped Brantley. As Kipnis drops the head down and down and in and hits it to right center field. Now Rios cuts it off, but watch Brantley. Here he comes. Sarbaugh is going to continue him as he looked to throw it in. He double clutched, and Sarbaugh kept him rolling. That was a heads up play right there to get the second run home, and Kipnis gets a two run single. Well done. You never keep your head down. You look up all the time, and Sarbaugh just kept him going. The air traffic controller waved him home. Action in the Texas bullpen now. As Nick Martinez can't get out of the inning. Nick Sarbaugh doing a nice job there, as you said, reading that play all the way. Lonnie Chisenhall drove in a run with a line drive single his first time up. Out of play. So right hander Scott Baker. He's been there long man. He scored five pitched five innings of relief. Back in May. Lonnie lifts one to deep right field. Goodbye. Chisholm Hall second home run of the series. A two out two run Tater into the right field seats. And the Indians have exploded for five runs here in the second inning. Boy, they how hot is Chisholm? <laughs> they lead it now eight to one as Lonnie stays red hot. He is six for ten in the series. Second home run in the inning, and Chisholm Hall got a pitch down to his leg. That might have been a changeup down and in that he hammered. That is home run number five for Chisholm Hall. Give him three RBIs on the night. He has 26. And man, he has been swinging it all year long. Yeah, he's been swinging it well, Rick, as you pointed out from day one. But in the last two, three weeks, he's starting to drive in runs and hit for power now, too. Yeah, he's, he's hitting it with authority. Extra base hits. Fun to watch, man. They, they were expecting him to do this for, you know, a while. This has been a breakthrough year for him, and he's just uh, showing Terry Francona, Ben, I'm going to be in the middle part of your lineup because I'm proving he I can hit. And Terry has believed it. It's just starting to show. Santana pops one up, foul ground. Beltre makes the catch to end the inning. But the Indians break out the lumber tonight here in Texas. George Pateras and Lonnie Chisinau stake the tribe to a seven-run lead.
Eight <laughs> one. The Indians lead it. As we go to the bottom of the second inning. Donnie Murphy going to lead it off for Texas. And T.J. House will go back to work after watching his offense explode here in the early going tonight. Upstairs with it, two and zero. Oh. House is having a tough time throwing strikes for for him. Mm -hmm. He's normally a machine. Well, tonight he's uh, battling himself a little bit. Pop back. Brown ball to first. Backhanded nicely by Santana. He'll go to the bag himself. Oh boy. One away. Now it's time for the Buick stat of the game. Since May 19th, the Indians have gone 13 and 6. And look at Detroit at the other end of the spectrum, which has enabled the Indians to close to within three games of the Tigers now in the division. Yeah. I mean, you looked like they were going to be out of it, 10 and a half behind until the Tigers came to town. The Indians had just been swept yes. by Oakland and looked bad in the process. I don't think it could have got any worse. That might have been rock bottom. I think you're right. That series right there with the Oakland A's. And since that point, see you later. A little bit low to Michael Choice. Bullseye finds the strike zone. Side corner. That's been a good pitch for House tonight to these right handed hitters to try and keep them honest. Yeah, stay inside. There's nothing wrong with that. You get them looking in there, that'll open up the outside part of the plate. And they've been doubling up in there. Good job. He got in again. Bonnie Chisholm Hall fires it across, two down. Time now for our Here Right Audiology Sounds of the Game. It shortens the game. Uh, you know, usually if our if our pitcher goes six and we, we have seven, eight, nine covered. You know, Cody's been throwing well, Shaw's been throwing well, we've been matching up our lefties well, you know, Axe is coming around, everybody's throwing the ball well and you know it's just a great thing to have out there. You know, we we know that if we went through six, we can win the game. Lonnie Chisholm all talking about the Indians starting pitching and how effective it's been. When they get deep into the ball game, they have such confidence. In their bullpen. Line the short caught by Caprera. Oh, the Indians defense shining here in Texas. And after two, the tribe leads it eight to one.
inning, and it's already time for the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Right-hander Scott Baker coming on here in the third inning. And for the Indians, knock Nick Martinez out after two innings. Yeah, Eight they runs on six hits. Yeah. Well, they had uh, some big hits last inning with two outs. They kept it going. They had three hits with two outs, and he had a walk. And Kipnis had big two-run single, and then the Chisholm Hall two-run homer. So the offense is uh, out and about tonight, early. Well, you saw on the numbers with Baker, he's done a little starting, a little relieving, so they're hoping for some long relief tonight. Yeah, they would love to get some distance here. He threw five innings out of the bullpen on May 31st. Game against Washington. Gave up five runs in five innings, though. Well, sometimes you got to take one for the team. That looks like it's going to fall. Murphy to deep left center. It will get down. Run down by Robertson on the warning track, but David Murphy pulls into second base with a double. And as you like to say, the Indians have their hitting shoes on the night. They sure do. And Murphy's had a, a terrific series coming back home to face his former mates. This ball had some hang time, but they were playing him over in right center field, and Murphy shoots it to left center field. Gets his 14th double, seventh hit for the Indians. And they're having a little fun tonight. Up comes Jason Giambi, and the Rangers will shift three onto the right side of the infield. I mean, here's a guy hitting eighth in your lineup. He's already getting his second at bat in the third inning. <laughs> Giambi, he pulled that ball. That almost hit him in the stomach, didn't it? Through the on deck circle <laughs> yeah. next to the Texas dugout. I know it. Well, that's what happens when you're on the plate. He, he likes the ball in. They go in again, but Ray elevated it 0 oh 2. Giambi awaiting the 0-2. It's that one high in the air. Fairly deep right field. Rios into the gap will make the catch. David Murphy will tag. And he'll go to third. So a productive out for Giambi as he moves the runner over. Take a look at the American League All-Star balloting results so far. Joey Bats leading the way with 2.1 yeah. million votes to this point. Ahead of Mike Trout, which is surprising to me. Yeah. All-star game at Target Field in Minneapolis this year. You'll see it only on Fox. And the Indians will make their first visit to Target Field right after the All-Star break. Infield in now for George Kateris. And three on the right side of that infield. The only guy on the other side is Beltrite because of Murphy at third. But Contreras, as I mentioned, his first at bat, he, he doesn't have a big swing. He's nice and short to the ball. Very short stride. You look at the swing he put on this home run. He got a fastball. And he certainly hit it a ton. That was his third homer. He has three hits for the Indians, all home runs, all solo home runs, by the way. Baker finds a strike zone. It's two and one. Popped in the air, center field. That'll get it done. Back is Robertson. And he'll make the catch. Tagging is Murphy. He's coming home. <laughs> he tried to throw it all the way there, but Murphy scores easily. George Kateris with another run batted in, and it's a 9 1 Cleveland lead. 
Top of the order with two down and Michael Bourne who walked and scored in the first. Bouncer to second base Sardinas throws him out. We'll head to the bottom half of inning number three. It's now the Indians nine and the Rangers one. Tune later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. 9 1 Cleveland. TJ House went through the Rangers 1 2 3 in the second inning. He's got the number nine hitter to lead off the bottom of the third now. Luis Sardinas. Outside for ball one. You know, Rick, you mentioned uh, about Nick Martinez, the fact that you know he made the jump to the Rangers starting rotation. There was probably no plans for that to happen right until the injuries. The same thing could could be said of Sardinas and Rubnet Odor. These are two young players that in my conversations with Rangers people, they probably should be in double A, maybe not even a triple A yet. But because of all the injuries and, and holes, they've had to call these guys up and what did Tom Green tell you today? I mean, they have nothing left to call up. Yeah. Period. So, I mean, you're stuck with it. They don't have a first baseman, but uh, Donnie Murphy's playing there right now. Daniel Robertson singled and scored in the first. It's one thing to get hit in the ribs with a fastball and wear a pretty good bruise for a while, but when you've uh, when you had a, a fracture to your face, and I know it didn't happen on a pitched ball, but it happened on a collision in the outfield. But when you go up there to the plate and you've got that, I know it's a protective device, but it's I don't know how it isn't in the back of your mind, knowing there's one place you don't want to get hit. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not easy when you're just wearing that in there to get used to it from your eye picking up the pitcher, I would think, as well. I don't think the fear factor of him getting hit up there is, is a big deal, but just 
Look at, he's got to focus with that, and normally that's just sitting out there. You just put your hand down there where you think that would be, and you can see it. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can just visually see it, and it, it's got to be, you got to get used to it, I would think. You see hitters that have been hit in the face wearing protective uh, covering like that, and it's, it's got to be strange. TJ House finds a strike zone there, three and one. When I go back to your era, I still remember Gary Renneke. Had yes. A, he had the old football style face mask yep. attached to his batting helmet. Yeah, he did with Baltimore. Yes, he did. Well, back in the, you know, in those days, you could wear helmets without ear flaps if you wanted. Oh, right, yeah. You know, you didn't have to wear them. You know, nowadays, the guys that come up have to wear the double ear flaps. him up. Robertson thought it was low. He was already headed to first base. But Jim Wolf says no sir. And it's the first strikeout for T.J. House. Well uh, let's take a look at it and see what you think. Uh, he didn't think it was a strike. He thought it was a little low but it had the plate and you get the call maybe because it is nine to one you get the call. It's, uh, it's borderline but from that angle it looked like it was right around the knees. I'll tell you what, we've seen some lower ones called in this series. I will say that. Yeah. Yesterday it was a big strike zone with uh, Gary Cedarstrom behind the plate. He was given off the dish a couple of inches, three, four inches off the outside part of the plate. If you're the hitter, you hate it. Line to third. It gets by Chisholm. Over near the line, Brantley trying to cut it off, he will, but on his way to third goes Sardinas, and then to second with a one out double is Elvis Andrews. Well, he can start his hit streak again, but he got a pitch down and into his liking, and he pulled it down past Chisholm Hall at third. That'll get in the corner, that'll go for a double. That's his 16th double of the year, so Texas. Uh, Showing a little light there. They want to get on the board. Now up comes Shinsu Chu, who grounded out his only time up. Gets by to Terrace. They'll flip it to TJ Butt. The run scores anyway. And the ball goes all the way back to the pitcher's mound, backed up quickly there by. Chisinau to keep Andrews at third. And T.J. House is having a tough time tonight, throwing strikes. Yeah, he's struggling. One in the dirt, and that ball gets through. And Terrace like double clutch and gave him a high flip, so there's nothing that House could do. And he got a good read on it. He's going to score. Andrews moves up. It's nine to two. Wild pitch of the year. Bounce to first. Santana with a backhander. He'll flip it. Two down. Run scores. Two picks up. RBI number 19. The Rangers get a pair here in the third inning. It's a 9 to 3 Indians lead. Time now for a Mazda game break. Let's go back to the studios. Here's Al Pulaski. Thanks, Al. Here's Adrian Beltre. Set a ball down low. Beltre and RBI ground out in the first. Good off speed pitch at him out in front. Oh. 
White Sox leading the Tigers two to one there in the fourth in Chicago. doesn't like it. No, well, he's going to walk around. He's going to have his uh, his talk with Jim Wolf. That was low. Off the glove of Chisholm, all base hit for Beltray. Second hit in the inning. By Belcher, just all got leather on it, and uh, you know, the flex it didn't go out very far, but it'll go as a base hit and bring up Rios. Now it's Rios grounded out his first time up. has only walked two, but he's been behind a lot of hitters. Only 36 of the 64 pitches for strikes tonight. That's a line to the gap in left center field. Beltre is going to come all the way around. They're going to wave it home. On his way to third and in with a triple is Rios. And right back come the Rangers with three here in the third. Rios with his second triple of the series. His second triple of the series and his eighth on the year. He plucked the gap in left center field. If Cabrera gets this ball, they would have had a shot at third base for Rios. He didn't know where to go with it. And I'm sure that's where a trailer sometimes will peek behind him and tell him where to throw it. They had a shot at the third base that he uh, gets it quickly and gets it in. So they will come back. They'll put three on the board and Rios just keeps on running. He's not even thinking about it. He has so many triples. He wants another one and he gets it. So T.J. House that is not his night. And Scott Atchison already up in the Indians bullpen. We talked about it before. This is a ballpark that can yield a lot of runs if you don't make your pitches. Well, it was a leadoff walk to the number nine hitter that got it started. And Andrews had a double. He got the second out, and then a double of the two guys that do all the damage, Beltre and Rios, as I told you on this homestand for the Rangers. They've done it all. They Donnie Murphy a ground out his first time up. Tell you what, you, you hope you get out of this inning and keep it a nine to four game because if they get that run in from third, they're going to feel like they're right back in the ball game because there is a lot of ball game left. Two and zero. Oh. Terry Francona has to be of the mindset. Look, we've got nine runs on the board. We've got to win this game. So he won't be afraid to go to his bullpen early tonight. On the line and foul. Woo. Not by much either. Look at that ball carry. See how where that landed up in the seats. How far that could go the other way. Hit it hard, and that thing that took off. Watch where it lands. It's foul, but boy, did it have plenty. Yeah. That's about where Murphy's ball uh, landed, but he hit his. The left-handed puller. That's the right-hander going the other way. Upstairs, and it's three and one. I'll tell you what, I would. If I was, doesn't get this guy, he may be out of here.
Jason Kipnis throws it over, and the inning comes to an end. The Rangers get three back, and after three innings of play, the Indians lead is 9-4. to four. We'll have to reset the watch on this road trip. At least not yet. Going from Texas to Kansas City. We will on Thursday. Stay in the central time zone for the next couple of days. As Dribble Cabrera leading off the fourth inning. And Scott Baker with the first pitch strike. Cabrera is two for two with a single, a double, and two run score. Again, they have it on the infield. They're straight up for Cabrera. Remember yesterday, they had the uh, second baseman way out in right field. And he hit right into the strength of the defense. Did that double take away from it? The one he hit down the third base line. I can think of Rick is that was Jason Fraser. Right. Is it, is it matter what kind of pitchers on the mound? Well, he was a you know pitching in the, out of the bullpen last yesterday. He's got about the same stuff as uh, Baker does. And as Drupal went fishing for one of the dirt strikes out one away. Fans don't miss the All-Star Game live from Target Field Tuesday, July 15th at 7.30 Eastern on Fox Sports. The Home Run Derby will be carried live on ESPN on Monday, July 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can vote for your favorite All-Stars, including Michael Brantley, online through July 3rd. Brantley has walked twice and scored two runs. Yeah, for Martinez on the day, he walked three guys, three Indians, and they've all come around to score. Brantley twice, and Michael Bourne to lead it off. Brantley drives one to deep right center field in the alley and go on to the bullpen. The Indians' offensive surge continues. Their third home run of the night as Michael Brantley socks one out of sight, and it's now a 10-4 Cleveland lead. 
Well, how about Brantley in the double digits now in homers? That's number 10 for Michael. He has 43 runs driven in on the year. There you go, a beautiful pitch. Two solo homers and a two runner for the Indians tonight. Ties his career high, which he set last year in home runs. Michael going deep for the first time since May 19th. And it helps restore that momentum. Well, yeah, they've scored in every inning. Kipnis an RBI ground out in the first and a two run single in the second. The Indians have beaten the Rangers seven of the last eight meetings. But you know prior to that the last four years the Rangers had the Indians number but I'll tell you what they have done a nice job last year and so far this year. Breaking ball line to right field and it's going to drop for a hit in front of Rios. He had a pretty good break on it but had to put the brakes on. Fans don't forget to tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have. Your photo shown during one of our telecasts. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Bonnie Chisenhall with an RBI single in the first and a two run homer in the third. So both Chisenhall and Kipnis have driven in three runs so far tonight. Well the Indians now with nine hits. They've uh, the offense has collected ten or more hits. In a season, I five straight games. One hit away, it'll be six in a row. We did that last year in the early part of the year, April 28th to May 4th. They're 20 and 6 when they get double digits and hits. Kipnis takes off and the throw down, not nearly in time. Jason with his seventh stolen base on the year. He had a great jump. He just look at him in the head down and he knew he picked the right pitch steals it easily. Chisholm with a towering drive. He got it. Deep right center field and it is gone just beyond the reach. Of a leaping Daniel Robertson. Second home run in the inning for the tribe. Second of the night for Lonnie Chisenhall. Oh, Woo. Man. Huh? Three more here in the fourth for the thundering Cleveland Indians. Look at Chiz. I'll tell you what, what a night he is having. Five RBIs, each three for three with two homers. And I mean, this was high and deep into the night. It goes over and it hits a chair in the bullpen and comes back into play. What a night for Chisenhall. Nothing but smiles for him. Two homers. He's driven in five runs. And as the Indians lead is now 12 to 4. So they've come right back. And wiped out that three spot that Texas scored in the bottom half of the third. Chisholm Hall enough at bats, he'd be leading all of baseball and hitting now, huh? I keep thinking, is you know, he's at what point close. is he going to catch up, right? He'll, he'll be getting close. He, he's going to stay in there, so it's just a matter of time. Right back at us. Come on. Not point. Nice grab. Nice job, young man. Santana taking a strike. Well, you talk about putting some crooked numbers up on the board. Fourth inning, they put three in the first, five in the second, three in the fourth, and a measly one in the third. 
Popped him up on the infield. Sardinas. Two down. Well, follow every Indians game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone and tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, score, stats, audio, uh, free MLB TV game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Indians.com today. Look at everybody's listening what he's got to say. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. He pops one up foul. Second time in a career. Lonnie Chisnall to have a two homer game. He did it. On September the 9th 2011. At Chicago. But the five runs batted in for Lonnie. A new career best. Do some quick math here, and by my count, Lonnie would need 198 at bats. Yeah, he's about 20 at, at, off, at right? Games end to qualify for the batting title, and he's at 159. 160, so 190. So he's 30 off. Yeah. I'm trying to think how long it takes to catch up to him. Well, you need what 3.1 for every game, yeah. per, per game, so. It'll be a little bit, but just continue to get. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Uh, who cares? He's in it no matter. I don't care how many at bats you have. He's in 377, period. Now David Murphy with a liner caught by Donnie Murphy. No relation. The inning is over. Belani Chisnall is having a night to remember deep in the heart of Texas. Two homers. And the Indians lead it 12-4. Replica jersey. It'll be June 21st. The Indians will host uh, the Detroit Tigers. You can celebrate the uh, shorts, former shortstop's induction into the Indians Hall of Fame that day. Plus, you enjoy Led Zeppelin fireworks after the ball game. Michael Choice leading off. Looks at a ball up high. He grounded out his only time up. Once again, TJ House has an eight run lead to work with. Well, you just go out there. That may be out of here. Brantley looks like he's got room. Maybe he's running out of real estate. And goodbye. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, the ball jumps out of here. Michael Choice with his sixth home run of the year, and Texas immediately gets a run back. It's now 12 to five. Well, that's the third time they've been able to answer when the Indians get on the board. And that ball was middle of the plate. 
Choice put a good part of the bat on the baseball, hits his sixth home run, his second in the series. Tell you the bullpen's going to be up and throwing again. Yeah, just as soon as that ball cleared the fence, the bullpen springing right back you in know, action. As I believe it's Atchison yeah, once again. As many it. runs as you have here, you want to get him to go out there and try and get him a win. But House is just see he hasn't had it tonight. He has struggled throwing strikes, and when he's left pitches out, he's left the middle of the plate. And there's no disputing anything you just said. I mean, we're watching it here tonight. He's not throwing the kind of strikes that we've seen him throw right. in the last couple of outings. So between the years, though, he's human. He knows Zach McAllister is making a rehab start. Could be in the mix to rejoin the club. Is, does he go out there maybe feel like I've got to be perfect tonight? I've, I've got to keep my spot in the rotation and, and maybe trying to do too much? Very well could be. I, you know what? He came into it. Nice play by Kipnis and a good stretch by Santana. I didn't know if Santana kept his foot on the bag, but obviously he did to get the out. Kipnis had to go a long way up the middle. Well, he's behind second base. He's got to get something on this throw. And there's the, uh, there it is. He's on the base. Stretch Santana. He's not a very big target to aim at over there, but he was able to keep the foot on the base. But getting back to what you were asking, you know what? That, yeah, there could be something psychological in their form right now where, you know, he wants to stay, but it's out of his control. He can't worry about it. He's got to go out and just pitch his game, and they certainly gave him three runs in the top half of the first to do it, to let him relax a little bit. It's just one of those nights he doesn't have it tonight. You know, everybody is yeah. entitled to it. He's had uh, three very good starts before this. You know, that first one in Baltimore, that was probably the best hitting team he faced where he gave up 11 hits at six innings. So, you know, he's, he's all over the place. He's a guy that he has to have his control because he's not an overpowering guy. He's a control pitcher. Jam job to short. Cabrera boots it. Four as Dribble Cabrera, that'll be his 10th error on the year. Yeah, I mean, how many of them have been easy? Right there, that's just one his hand gets in the way. In the middle of the glove while it goes, you can see it got him on his thumb, it looked like. So that'll be an error for Cabrera and the Indians. Just what House didn't need. Now you're flipping it back over to the top of the lineup. Daniel Robertson called out on strikes his last time up, but that was a borderline pitch that he was rung up on. Yeah, I know Terry would like to leave the, this kid out here for a while, but I don't know if he can continue if, uh, if anybody else reaches. Some days you have it, some days you don't. Tonight, T.J. House just doesn't have it. He's working, he's battling his way and trying to get through it, man, to the best of his ability, though. I, you know, you give him credit. Get on the ground by Chisholm, down the line it goes. Sardinas all the way to third, and they're going to wave him home. And Robertson puts on the brakes around second base. He'll hold with an RBI double. So Texas immediately responding with two runs here in the fourth. Yeah, I don't think he can go with him any longer. And you know, the error, you knew it was going to happen. And he doesn't have it to begin with. You give him an extra out, and this one goes down in the corner. And they come in, and they, they come back and respond. They've got two on the board, so Terry's got to make a move. Nothing he can do. It's a 12-6 to six ball game. But T.J. House, his night is over. Time out for a pitching change. Scott Atchison coming on when we come back.
and the Tigers. That'll be June 20th. That'll be a week from Friday when we get home. All fans can enjoy the fireworks. And the show will be set to the music of Nirvana. And also, Rally Alley will be taking off outside before the game with the music and games and fun. Come on out. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. Well, Scott Atchison is on now. As Terry Francona will look to try and piece the rest of this game together with his bullpen. Indians still lead it by six. Elvis Andrus has walked, doubled, and scored a run, takes the strike. Breaking ball got him. Andrus was trying to protect and just foul it off, but he couldn't. And there are two down here in the fourth. Yeah, this was like a late protect. Just trying to foul it off. He, he had him. You can see Andrus is upset. It was a good pitch. You know, Andrus handles the bat very well, but he gets the strikeout and out number two in the inning. Up comes Shinsu Chu with a runner at second base and two down. Chu. And RBI ground out in the third. Good breaking ball, but not called a strike. Just a little bit inside. Upstairs with it, 2 0. Breaking ball here right at Kipnis. And the inning is over. Texas scores two. And after four, the Indians lead it 12 to 6.
by Sunnyside Toyota, a quarter mile west of the Great Northern Mall on the North Olmstead Auto Mile. By Levin Furniture, for the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin. And by Kia, visit IKEAcleveland.com to learn more. Twelve six Indians on top as we go now to the fifth. Jason Giambi going to lead it off. I think this is one of those games, Rick. That it's kind of interesting that we can look at the game within the game, how each manager approaches this scenario. Each manager's had a starter knocked out early. Mm -hmm. In Ron Washington's case, he's down. Eight to one after two innings. So he's gone to his long man thinking, I just need somebody to give us some innings so we don't burn up our bullpen because there's still another game tomorrow and one after that, and we've got to think big picture long term. Terry Francona has his starter knocked out, but he's got the big lead and he's thinking, we have to win this game. We can't afford to lose this game. So he's approaching it. Maybe with a different mindset from his bullpen. Well, point of view. and he's going to use his guys maybe for an inning and a third tops, you know, and do it like he would uh, any other game. Like it's a close game, I would think. I mean, we're in the we're only into the fifth inning here. Now, had Texas scored a couple more runs there, and maybe trim this to 12 to 8. Baker might be out. Ron Washington might be back into his bullpen because Baker hasn't exactly given him. Relief to this point. He's allowed four runs in his two innings of work. Right. That's true, he has. Well, the Indians have their hit shoes on. Double digits and hits for the sixth consecutive game. 12 runs on the board. It's been a while since they've scored 12. Last time an Indians player. Hit three home runs for his first three hits of the year was Juan Gonzalez, who had a fantastic season back in 01. Well, the last time they scored double digit in runs was the 21st of May against the Tigers. They had 11 to 10 win. Extra innings. And Kateris has rung up on that low pitch that Jim Wolf has been calling with a lot of frequency here tonight. Our in-game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. George Kateris going deep in the second inning. Part of a five-run inning. Lonnie Chisinau with a two-run shot. Lonnie hit another yeah. two-run shot in the fourth. That's just an instant replay of the first one. He's driven in a career-high five runs on the night. Michael Bourne taking a low strike. Well, if you're a pitcher and you're watching, paying attention, I'd be throwing everything below the knees because that's what's getting called. Well, look where the target's at. Yeah. <laughs> look at that catcher. He's saying, you keep it down here. If it has any part of the plate, you'll get it called. And a breaking ball for a strike. <laughs> One and two the count. Swing and a miss. The Indians go one, two, three for the first time tonight. But they lead it for six.
Bottom of the fifth inning, Adrian Beltre, Alex Rios, Donnie Murphy do up. They're either making an early exit or a run to the concession stands. The way this one's going on, we're no, going to leave early. No early exit. <laughs> I bet they're going to concession stands. Adrian Beltre, Alex Rios, Donnie Murphy for the Rangers here in the fifth. Beltre has singled, scored, and driven in a run. And Atchison with a breaking ball for a strike. Good pitch by Atchison. Stand with that off speed pitch. Out point of the right. Stays one and two. Just a bit outside. And we're even two balls, two strikes. White Sox lead the Tigers 5 2. Fifth inning in Chicago. Line drive, base hit right through. Guy can just flat out hit. Alex Rios coming up. He's a Tripled twice now in two games. He has seven hits in the series and with more on the Rangers right handed hitter. Here's Katie. Matt, he's having quite the year at the plate for the Rangers. The Indians said the biggest difference they see in him this year in comparison to the last year with the White Sox is he's not trying to pull the ball anymore. Instead, he's staying through the ball. And really, when you think about it, Matt, playing in this ballpark, going for right center field is where you want to go. The Indians need to pitch him down and away, though, is the key. Now, I agree with that. We're this field will make you want to go the, use the whole field because it carries so well to right. And his triple, one came to center field, one came to left center. Atchison going to second. There's an out. They get the lead runner, Beltre, retired. One away. They were just kidding around. I think folks thought that <laughs> Cabrera and Beltre were joking around there uh, off the bag. And Cabrera, it... It probably looked to the average guy up in the stands probably like, oh, we could have a Donnie broke here. Well, they were messing around at third base before when Cabrera got up there on the first inning. But if you were sitting in the upper deck and you saw that, you might go, uh-oh, we got a Donnie Brook coming. But there's two guys horsing around a little bit. But Going back to that play, nice job by Atchison to come to the front of the mound, grab that, and make a perfect well, throw to second base. The key is you just need an out. Six run game. You don't want to make it, you know, you weren't going to get a double play there with Rios running. by Donnie Murphy it's ball and two strikes reaches for the breaking ball slowly chopped the third Chisholm oh, yeah. off balance throw Santana can't come up with it another error Trying to throw on the run, you've got to make sure you put something on it. He goes, he drops down to the side way too much. You've got to put something on the throw. You can't just throw it from the side. You don't have any foundation beneath you. I mean, you can throw it from the side if you have a foot, you know, your, your legs underneath you on the ground. His was, he was on the move. Second error of the night now for the Indians.
Michael Choice homered his last time up. Nice pick backhanded style by Kateris. That kept one from going to the back to stop and keeps the double play in order. Yeah, he had to backhand that ball too. Ended up catching it. Double play ball to short. Cabrera to Kipnis on the first. Santana did a great job to come off the bag first. Makes the catch and then slaps the tag on to complete the double play. Indians living dangerously here in the fifth. They lead it 12 6. Going to the sixth inning here in Texas. Don't forget, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STOFanPhoto for a chance to have your photo shown during one of our telecasts. It's all courtesy of AT&T. As Dribble Cabrera, Michael Brantley, Jason Kipnis for the tribe here in the sixth. Scott Baker gave up a run in the third, three in the fourth, and then set him down one, two, three in the fifth with a couple of strikeouts. Cabrera clobbers one foul. One and one to count here for his dribble. Now Baker missed his target by a lot, and Chirinos went to the inside to try and grab it. He missed it too. John Axford now getting loose for Cleveland. See Cabrera shake his head. Why did I swing at that pitch? Left handed hitters against right handed pitchers are more susceptible to that down and in pitch than the other way around. Maybe you mean the lefties to the right of the yeah, cutters. No, that, that that breaking ball that down and in almost sliders. Yeah, you know that back foot slider. Well, most left-handers are, are good low and in hitters, and they see that ball down in that area. They want to get after it, and you, you want to get out front to, to hit it. And that ball, when it gets down there, you, it's 
sometimes that that slider breaks down and out of the zone and you can't stop your swing. That's like a good late breaking ball from the lefty into the righties. But I, I think left-handers will swing at it more. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I agree. They just seem like they want to get they after like that, that pitch. ball down yeah. in, in there. You better make sure it's, it's, it doesn't stay in. And that's the thing. You've always said that if you're going to go down and in or in to a left-handed hitter that likes the ball there, you better miss you better, in off the plate a uh -huh. lot. Yes, you better. I mean, you can uh, look at it today. If you look at the Kipnis's first base hit, you know, when that, that ball it was down and in, he just drops the barrel head of the bat. Cabrera goes down swinging. And all of a sudden, Scott Baker has found something. He has struck out three Indians hitters in a row. Time for a Mazda game break. Let's go back to the studio. Here's Al. Thanks, Al. Michael Brantley tonight has walked twice and homered. And he's single. scored three runs, and now he's got himself a base hit to left center field. And a one-out base runner for Cleveland here in the sixth. That's staying on the baseball nicely, getting the pitch away, and just taking exactly what the pitcher gives you. The 11th hit for the Tribe tonight. Second for Brantley. He's been on all four times. Walked twice, homered, now singled. And now Jason Kipnis, who has singled twice, scored two, and he's driven in three. Pops this one to center. Robertson. Lonnie Chisenhall is homer twice tonight. Take a look on our Wendy slow mo replay. This is the first one. And this is the second. Boy, they were very similar, weren't they? Yes, they were. Did you notice he wasn't choking up either time he swung that bat? Remember how he used to be choking up a whole lot? He's down on the end, and he was when he hit the two homers. Good swing. See that? Yeah. He's down at the he's down at the end, which is fine. I don't know if it's the same size bat he's swinging tonight as he normally has been. Both of them left the yard. One to kill. Chirinos has done a very good job behind the plate with uh, regards to the run game. He's second in all of baseball with 14 caught stealings and 31 attempts. Well, that's a good job because Kipnis stole a base tonight. And he certainly didn't steal it off Jernos. He got it off the pitcher. He had a, such a good jump. Yeah, he, that's that's stolen easily. Brantley back in the second inning scored all the way from first base on a two out three two pitch to Jason Kipnis when he singled the right field. It was a great job of hustling by Brantley and very alert third base coaching by Mike Sarbaugh who saw Rios kind of look back towards second base and he just kept on sending Brantley home. You don't see many guys score from first on a single. Up foul again. 
Yeah, it was a heads up play, but what what uh, Sarbar caught was Rios over there. He held it. He was going to throw it, and he double clutch. And that, right then and there, when he didn't see the ball out of his hands, he kept him coming. Mm -hmm. See how far down the line he was? He was way down there at home plate. He had his eye on Rios, his eye on the base runner. And when he, when you extend yourself down the line, it gives you a little more time to wave him on. And that one little mishap, certainly he took advantage of. That was, that was a great job. You know, the only time a third base coach gets any credit, uh, you know, I mean, they don't get credit. They get noticed. They get blamed, or when they get noticed is when a guy gets thrown out. But, you know, they never get noticed when they do a great job like he did tonight, and, and you wave them home. And that's knowing your runners and just knowing the situation, and that was well done. Meantime, Lonnie Chisnall is having a terrific at bat here. He's down on the count. He's following everything in sight off to stay alive. Hoping that he gets a mistake somewhere in the heart of the plate and he can mash another one. Well, he will if, if they make mistakes. The way he's swinging it, he's, he's about as hot as you can get. I'll tell you what, I'd be hanging out with him if I was a hitter. He rifles this one a deep left center field. Chu won't get it. It's <laughs> over his head and short hops the wall. Brantley flying around third. He's coming home to score. Lonnie Chisenhall with his fourth hit of the night. And a new career high, six runs batted in. Well, and 11 total bases. This one's only a double. Come on, Lonnie. But he goes the other way. How about that? They pitch him away. He stayed on it. He short hops the wall. Man, is he on fire. Brantley scores easily from first base. And what a night Chisenhall is uh, having. He's still a triple away from the, the cycle. And he's already has two homers. Indians lead it by seven now. They have been relentless tonight offensively. Carlos Santana picked up an RBI in the first inning. 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Well, we're Sant it's, all, it's Santana and Giambi, the only two guys in the lineup that have not scored a run. Michael Brantley has scored four of them. He's been on base four times. He's touched home plate four times. Because Chisholm's hitting behind him, and he has six ribbies. <laughs> Look at Michael trying to catch his breath. Yeah, give me some oxygen. Oh, my God, it's Texas. <laughs> it doesn't get all the way down. He scored from first base. Yeah, give him some oxygen. Twice he scored from first base tonight. Uh huh. <laughs> he was talking to himself. <laughs> you don't think about it. That's a 90 yard sprint, man. Rehydrate. <laughs> give him the oxygen. They have it on the football sidelines, they don't have it in the baseball dugouts. Two and one to count here on Santana. Good change of pace by Baker and he evens the count at two and two. Baker came on after the starter Nick Martinez gave up eight runs in the first two innings. And Baker has given up five now. And this is fourth inning of relief. Strikes out Santana. And the inning is over. Ramani Chisenhall's career night continues. And the Indians lead it 13 to 6.
Minnesota.com, where Michael Brantley ranks in all-star voting and how you can help him get to Minnesota. What Johnny Manziel did to show some Cleveland pride. And Sam Amico with the latest details on the Cavs coaching search. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. John Axford coming on now for the Indians. 29th appearance this year, 1-3 at 338 ERA. Hitter here. The choice it looks like. Oh, yeah, you're right. And that pinch hitter. Oh, no, that's the catcher. Oh, that's, it is. That's cheering okay. up. Okay, I'm sorry. Choice made the last out. I got you. In the hole, it gets by Santana. Not much he could do. He was sprawled out, but didn't get to it. And a leadoff single. Here in the sixth. Our great clip of the game from yesterday, Justin Masterson. He went five and two thirds innings. Gave up two runs on five hits. Walked two, struck out six. Probably should have only been charged with one run if not for that wild pitch. He had it. Donnie Murphy down on the count 0 2, and he was looking to throw a slider away, and he, he threw it away all right. But it continues that trend of good starting pitching, which came to an end tonight. TJ House just didn't have it. Well, the good thing about it is uh, their, their offense showed up tonight in a big way. So if you're going to have a night where it doesn't show up, you better score. Well, back to back singles for the Rangers here in the sixth off John Axford by the eight and nine hitters in the Texas line. There's the curveball from Axford. Sardinas waited back on it, found the hole, able to go first to third. They have nine hits now through the Rangers. A couple of doubles, triple, and a home run. Top of the order now with Daniel Robertson. He's got two hits, including a double and an RBI. Breaking ball for a strike. Scott Atchison gave the Indians an inning and two thirds scoreless relief. Blocked by Kateris. into the mask of Jim Wolf. He bore the full brunt of that foul ball. Yes, he did. You can see Gutierrez right there. There's a swing, and it's just, wow, direct hit. Let him get the cobwebs out. Checking him out immediately. All training staffs now 
are so adept at checking immediately for any signs of a concussion. Didn't do much, it just uh, deflected off the bat and it went right into the mask. They're checking him, they're just giving him a little extra time, asking him some questions, letting him talk. Well, it looks like they're having him look up at the scoreboard yeah. to see if he could see anything and say, What do you see? Well, we're in California and <laughs> they're just double checking. He looks like he's he is okay, but boy, watch this. Well, looks like I don't uh, know. No, I, I don't think I, he's you know be able to continue. I don't think so either. We got one guy going to go put his gear on. I'm, I'm not sure that was Lance Barksdale. I didn't see who left. We had Gary Cedarstrom behind the plate last night, and that's him. They want to go right check him out a little bit further. Yeah, I don't I think that's a smart move. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, you know, a lot of times this is the fourth game of this series, and he started out, he was at third base, and now he'll be taken off tomorrow, so they just want to go in and then uh, reevaluate him. Well, the other umpire will leave the field and get his gear on. So we've got a, a timeout here in Texas while we get the new umpire outfitted with the gear. Well, while we have a moment, let's go back and take a look at the night Lonnie Chisenhall is having. He is a perfect four for four. He has driven in at least one run in all four trips to the plate. That was the first two run homer after the single got a run. Then a second one. This one went a lot higher and deeper into right center field for his second one. And then a great at bat with two strikes. He just takes it the other way for a double. And Brantley had to score from first base again. That's the fourth run. Brantley has scored the sixth run. Chisholm has driven in. Look at that now. His last 19 games, he's hitting 394 with all six of his homers and 25 of his 29 runs batted in. So it's not like he was swinging a wet newspaper the first 32 games. He just didn't have a lot of RBI opportunities, and some of that was because he was batting maybe eight, hitting down in the lineup. But lately, and some of that was because of injury. Some of it was because he's just been swinging the bat so well. But you know, you had Santana and Swisher both out of the lineup there for a while. So Lonnie moved up and he just started driving in run after run. Uh, and he's been using the whole field all year long. He's going from line to line. And that's something he has done right from the, you know, there was a lot of, you know, flares the other way early in the year, but going down the third baseline and but now he's starting to pull the ball with authority, but still, as we showed you his last hit, staying on the baseball and going to left center field, which short off the wall, he was doing it with some pop and driving the ball to the left center. So he's actually seeing the ball as good as you can see. players waiting for our new home plate umpire that's going to take him a little while to get that equipment out of his gear and get ready to go I'm sure it was packed away these guys are probably leaving tomorrow it's not like he has it waiting right there I'm sure it was packed and they're going to have to get it out of the box Mark Ripperger went to put on the gear he was at second base Gary Cedarstrom the crew chief he had home plate last night Lance Marksdale right there. He'll have home plate tomorrow wherever this crew is headed. So Ripperger, he's kind of like the guy in the middle, so he'll he'll take the plate for the remainder 
of tonight's ball game and certainly we hope everything checks out a OK with Jim Wolf. But he, he did look he had sort of that glazed look. And you, you can understand why because that was a foul tip. Right square in the mask. While we wait on the. New home plate umpire let's go back to the studios right now for another Mazda game break here's out. All right, thanks, Alan. I see Chicago leads Detroit 6 4 in the Windy City. So, a lot of offense in that ball game tonight. And, of course, uh, you know, last night, Rick, the, the White Sox end up losing on a uh, ninth inning home run by David Ortiz off of their closer. They, job, job of Chamberlain. Okay. They, they were giving Nathan a day off because he'd been struggling and, and overworked a little bit. But the bigger story in that ball game was the fact that Miguel Cabrera had to leave the game with that hamstring injury. But he's oh back boy. in there tonight. Hanging sliders go a long way, don't they? That's exactly what Ortiz hit. And that. Brought Boston from down 3-2 to up 5-3 in the win. And again, Miguel Cabrera left that game last night with that same hamstring problem that bothered him back in May. But he's right back in the lineup tonight, and he's two for three with an RBI and two runs scored. So if he scored two runs, he must be running okay. Yeah, that's either that or they hit it deep enough where they don't have to worry about throwing him, <laughs> throwing be. him out. That's right. Because if you remember last year with Cabrera, the, the issues that he had. He was he couldn't run at all. Yeah. He couldn't run a lick and he played all, all the time anyway. Well, they're putting the freeze here uh, to Atchison. He's been out. I mean, excuse me, Axford. And he has thrown pitches. He's just sitting here. It's just a matter of waiting. Well, we know where Waldo is. We just don't know where Mark ah, Ripper is. I've been looking for him all series. And we finally found him. On Monday night when we're getting ready to leave. Goodness, you guys are good. Where'd you find them? <laughs> oh boy, when you got time to kill, guys might even start doing the YMCA dance on the field. Just never know. Indians and the Texas Rangers drive with a big lead. Trying to win for the ninth time in their last 10 games. Trying to go to two games over 500. Keep the heat on front running Detroit. Indians began the night just three games out of first in the AL Central. And it's just been amazing the turnaround of this club in the last three weeks. You know, they got swept at home by Oakland. They were 10 and a half games out, and we thought, well, this season might be circling the drain already. And yet, the Tigers came to town. The Indians swept them and they've been playing pretty good baseball ever since. Well, and they, you, the name of the game is you win, you win the series. And you, so you see, since May 19th, they're 13 and 6, and the Tigers are the exact opposite. They've gained seven and a half games on the Tigers. And everybody, you see that the, the White Sox are just above 500. Now they were playing without their big boy Abreu, who's homer tonight on the DL. Kansas City under 500. The only Minnesota blip, as well. The only blip in that stretch of games that we just showed, Rick, was the four straight road losses, and then you know that back-to-back one-run losses in Chicago. But other than that, they played exceptionally well. So Mark Ripperger is in gear. He's ready to go. He's going to take over behind the plate. We'll work a man short now for the rest of the ball game. Gary Cedarstrom and Lance Barksdale will patrol the bases, but they'll have to be on the move. And. John Axford getting a couple of warm up tosses. Daniel Robertson will be the batter. There are two on and nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth for Texas. So still a long way to go in this one.
It's a delay of eight minutes. Yeah, I'm sure he didn't have his gear. It had to be packed. I'm sure he had to go get it. And Axford's pitch is up by two and two the count on Robertson. Three balls and two strikes. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. First out of the inning. Sardinas with a stolen base is first. Well, that's what they feel. They don't care. They were going to send him anyway. Figuring in this type of game, we've got to stay out of the double play. And he challenges them with a fastball. So they start their runner. They get the stolen base and they get out of the double play. Well, this becomes big for John Axford to quell the uprising and not allow Beltre or Rios to bat in this inning with guys on base. He's got Andrus and then Chu. Chops one to third. Uh -oh. They got the runners hung up between second and third. Throw back to second. Got him, and the inning is over. Oh, a boneheaded base running mistake by the Texas Rangers, and the inning is over. Axford gets out of trouble, and the Indians lead it 13 to 6. June 17th, that's a week from tomorrow. The Indians will host Albert Pujols and the Los Angeles Angels. Dogs must be current on vaccinations, and a portion of the evening's proceeds will benefit the Cleveland Animal Protective League. Visit Indians.com for your ticket details. Well, the Indians with a 13-6 lead, seventh inning.
Well, they got a, they got a break in that inning to get out of it. A bad ba uh, base running mistake by both the guy that was on third. I was going to say two mistakes, really. Yes, the guy that was on third should have broke home. They were going to take the out anyway. They weren't going to go home with it. But the guy from second going to third had no business. You got to make sure the guy in front of you is going to run when you're down six runs. That's for sure. David Murphy following it back, and again, I know that. By the time you get to the big leagues, those should be elementary fundamentals that you shouldn't have to yeah, but go Joe over. But Sardinas is a young player who, yes, you know, still learning. By right, should still be in the minor leagues, but because of all the injuries, well, his thought process was right. David Murphy strikes out. One down here in the seventh. You Take watch. us through it, Rick. All right, the, the third base, you got to go. Chisenhall's going to first base all the way. But with your Sardinas, he, he knew they were going on the ground ball, but he didn't get back in time. I mean, he overran the guy at third, and he had nowhere to go. So he was forced to go back to second. They throw behind, and they tag him out, and they get the double play to get out of the inning. But the man on third base should have went home. See, Chisenhall was going towards second base. He was just going to take it and go to and take you out at first and he and Sardinas would have been to third base. If the guy on third goes home. They want it up and he throws it up and by him. Seven punch outs now for Baker. This is his fifth inning of relief work. And as I mentioned, when he came into the ball game, he had a game back on May 31st in which he pitched five innings of relief. He also had five and a third innings out of the bullpen against Colorado on May 7th. Well, he's like a starter tonight because this is pitch number 75 for him. Seven strikeouts equal his season high. Most by a Texas reliever since Ron Mayhay struck out seven. And those were seven Detroit Tigers back in the game in August of 03. Terrace following it back to Terrace. Homered in the second, a sacrifice fly to drive in another run in the third. He was called out on strikes his last time up. To Terrace with a line drive base hit in the right field. So he continues to swing a very productive bat for the Indians in his few opportunities this year. Well, he, he didn't leave the yard. The only time he hasn't left the yard, first single for him. He got a pitch up to his liking and drives it into right field. So he's two for three. Up comes Michael Bourne, hitless tonight, 0 for 3. Walked and scored back in the first. Ball behind the bag. Murphy will take it himself. Stretch time in Arlington. The Indians lead it 13 to 6. And the seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Spencer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be.
13-6, Tribe on top as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Here at Globe Life Park in Arlington, and you get a look in at the Texas ballpark from our Panini's overstuffed cam. This ballpark opened the same year as Progressive Field in Cleveland. Jin Su Chu, 0 for 3 tonight, just 1 for 14 in the series. John Axford rears back, throws a good fastball right by him. It's a good sight to see Axford. He's got a good fastball. And obviously, that's. Got to be an important pitch for him. Well, keeping it in the strike zone is important for him. You know, when he gets around, he gets in trouble when he walks people. Like, like any pitcher would. Just command the fastball. He has a good curveball as well. This is the time you go out and pitch. You've got a seven run lead. There's no, no sense in nibbling. You've got a guy at the plate right here in Chu that's, he's struggling. Check the swing. He went around. And Chu is out number one here in the seventh. Second strikeout for Axford. Yeah, he, he goes upstairs with the heater. Two start and he couldn't hold up. It's up going. It wasn't that bad of a pitch anyway. Uh, it looked like a strike to begin with. Adrian Beltre, two hits tonight, a run batted in. Pops one up high in the air. Jason Kipnis makes the catch. Two down. Well, it's another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night. That'll take place June 20th. The Indians will host the Tigers. It'll be Dollar Dogs all night long. Visit Indians.com for your ticket details. Alex Rios with an RBI triple back in the third inning. Mike Potter telling me that for Rios, eight triples now, and this is 64th game of the year. It's the most triples by a Rangers player in the Texas era through his first 64 games. That's a, a boatload. Well, that's, a, that's a heck of a year. I mean, he's still got 100, almost 100 games to go. This club came from Washington. Right. The last guy to have this many through 64 games was a, a one time Indian, Chuck Hinton. Okay. He had nine triples back in 1963 through his first 64 games. Rios with a simple single here with two outs in the seventh inning. But you know, to Katie's point earlier, what the Indians have noticed is Rios making a more concerted effort to use the middle of the field. Yeah, it's only going to make him a better hitter, and he's already a pretty good hitter at that. Well, that's why that average is up over 330. They've told us that. Jim Wolf is being evaluated and he is listed as day to day. So we'll see if he uh, probably I can't imagine he'll be on the field umpiring with his crew tomorrow. Might need a couple of days to. Well, you never know. Might need seven days on the concussion deal. Well, I'll have to, I'm sure, reevaluate tomorrow whenever he gets to where he is going. 
if he even leaves it. Yeah. Donnie Murphy 0 for 3 on the night. Swing and a miss. Chunk of George Pateras who will need a minute to shake it off. Oh, right directed to the knee. I mean, you go down thinking and it got up underneath that yeah. pad. Yeah. It didn't hit it and go straight down, it got underneath and it goes forward. Foul tips are chewing them up behind the dish tonight. Oh. Ouch. Sure, there's padding there, but that still hurts. It's not enough. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Axford has fanned three in two scoreless innings of relief. And the Indians still lead it 13 to 6. by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Stay tuned for Indians Live brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming up right after the ball game here on Sports Time Ohio. Indians in command leading at 13 to 6 as we head to the eighth inning. A 
as Dribble Cabrera. A single, a double, and two runs scored on the night. And a base hit in the right field. So Cabrera with his third hit tonight gives him seven hits in the series. Michael Brantley has his track shoes on tonight, Rick. <laughs> well, he was on first base and he had to score on a single by Kipnis right there. That's the first time. This is a Chisholm Hall double left center he had to score, and I'll tell you what. Whoo, give me some oxygen, baby. <laughs> oh my God. That's not an easy run. He has scored four runs on the night. Yes, he has. He was able to jog around the bases in the fourth. He hit a home run. Now he's going to have to run that? again. Five times. I want to see a gapper. Watch him score from first again. <laughs> he's been on all five times. And you got to think that Baker's out of gas by now, don't you? Coming out of the bullpen, he's done a fine job. That looked like it might have been a change up away. So Brantley has three hits. It's the third time he's pitched five innings or more out of the uh, bullpen for Texas this Boy, year. That's, that's a long time pitching out of the bullpen. Tanner Shepard's getting up now for Texas in their pen. Ball got loose from the Indians' bullpen, so brief time out here as Brantley gets ready to put the track shoes on maybe one more time. Jason Kipnis at the plate. Kipnis with a single. In the second inning that scored Brantley all the way from first. That was one of the highlights we showed you. He also singled in the fourth. Kipnis has driven in three and scored two on the night. Those four runs scored for Brantley. There's a chopper in a right field. Another base hit for Kipnis. Coming around third. Cabrera's going to be waved to him. The throw not in time. And the Indians now lead it 14 to 6. Kipnis with his fourth run batted in on the night. And Brantley went to third on the play. That's just a high hopper placed beautifully in the right center. Brantley catches a break. He only has to go two bases. The Indians now with their 16th hit. And Chisholm Hall with another opportunity to drive in yet another. Well, the last Indian to have seven runs batted in in a game was Shinsu Chu. So, Lonnie, if he, if he knocks in one here, he'll equal that. I was going to tell you about Brantley with his four runs tonight. That gives him 44 on the year. That's fourth best in the league. Well, it's Miller time, Rick. Brought to you by Miller Lite and Lonnie Chisenhall having a career night. He has homered twice. That equals a career best for him, but the six runs batted in are a new career mark for Lonnie. Now, the last Indian to drive in nine runs in a game, Chris James. We know is Chris James, so should Lonnie get one out of here? James will have company. The way he's swinging the bat, I wouldn't put anything past him. Well, you're right. I mean, he has had uh, just an unbelievable night. His last at bat was a thing of beauty because I don't remember if we had the final count on how many pitches he fouled off in that ba at bat, and then he blistered one the left center field up the alley for an RBI double. Scott Baker has made two starts. This is his sixth appearance out of the bullpen. Well, those five innings out of the bullpen are like starts. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, when you think about it, he's thrown 87 pitches now. Yeah. But when you're not on a regular turn, right? He's probably, as you said, he's probably his tank's on empty. Oh, there's no doubt. He's done a, you know, all things considered, he has seven strikeouts. 
just uh, run out of gas. And, the norm, and this is one taking one for the team right now because they've got a couple of ball games left before their off day on Thursday. Up and away, missed. Two and two. He's alive. Well, he's got a piece of it. Catcher couldn't hold on to it. Shepherds is up. He's loose. He's, I would assume, coming in if anything else happens. They're not going to try and come inside out. Last couple of pitches away. Another breaking ball hung. He did it. And this one is gone. Lonnie Chisenhall's night continues, and you have got to be kidding me. His third home run of the game, he has equaled the incredible feat of Chris James, who drove in nine runs in a ball game <laughs> against the Oakland A's, and Lonnie has done it here tonight against Texas. He is back in Little League for one night. How about that? A three run homer for Chisholm Hall here in the eighth yes, inning. Wow. A night to remember for Lonnie Chisholm Hall. Ron Washington has to go back to his bullpen. They'll need another pitcher. Lonnie Chisenhall with an RBI single in the first, two run homer in the second, two run homer in the fourth, RBI double in the sixth, and a three run homer here in the eighth. Lead it. Carlos Santana is the batter. The new pitcher is Tanner Sheppers. There's still nobody out in the inning. The Indians have 
piled on four more runs. Now this is the most they've scored in a ball game this year. They had 15. That was the 14th, May 14th at Toronto. So they have 17. What a night. By 17 Chisholm. runs on 17 hits. And five of those hits belong to Lonnie Chisenhall, who's hit three home runs. Santana strikes out. Lonnie has equaled the franchise record with nine runs batted in here tonight. It started with an RBI single off the glove of the first baseman Donnie Murphy in the first. Then the two run homer in the second. Another two run drive into the chief seats in the fourth. Great at bat RBI double in the sixth. Wow and just another off speed pitch that he just leaves the yard down the line. I think it's That's kind of appropriate. He ties Chris James franchise record. Chris James was from Texas. Oh yeah. He does it right here in the Lone Star well, State. Well he does in the Lone Star State but man it's like Little League. This is uh, you'll never see a day like this again. I'll tell you what. With two down, Jason Giambi will be coming up. Let's go back, take a look at the Phantom Cam on the last home run hit by Chisinau. Oh, he caught that way out in front, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. Ooh. That's why, look at it, just rolls over, and it was right down the line. You talk about locked in and having tunnel vision. A swing and a miss, and the count is 0 and 2. You talk about, you hear people, athletes, players talk about being in the zone. I heard somebody say once, you don't live in the zone, you visit it once in a great while. If you're lucky. And Lonnie Chisenhall is in the zone here tonight, June the 8th, 2014, Arlington, Texas. 15 total bases. That's better than the cycle. Three home runs, a double, and a single. Who needs a cycle? He didn't want to run. He didn't want to run for the triple, so he just wanted to trot. He's added 20 points to his batting average tonight. He was already hitting a ridiculous 365, and now he's up to 385. Yeah, it, what an incredible night. He's worked his tail off, and he's he's seeing the rewards of the hard work he's put in. Came to spring training, and you know, it, early in the year wasn't the everyday player, wasn't getting everyday at bats. He he's, has hit his way into the everyday lineup. He's stuck in between two pitchers there, man. Where, where's the hitters? If I was a hitter, I'd be next to him. Are you kidding me? Jason Giambi 0 for 4 on the night. Full count, payoff pitch. He goes down swinging, and the inning comes to an end. It's Lonnie Chisenhall night here in Arlington, Texas. The Indians lead it 17 to 6.
Stay tuned for Indians Live. If you missed any of this one tonight, you'll want to stay around and see the night Lonnie Chisinau had one more time. And hopefully, Katie will be able to corral him. Although, Nightline's probably after him. Uh, David Letterman probably wants him on the show, too. Be a lot of competition for Lonnie tonight. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, by tomorrow, everybody will see the night he had tonight. As Carlos Carrasco will come in out of the Indians bullpen. Carrasco for the 14th time. Ryan Rayburn has come on for Michael Brantley yeah, in left field. Brantley, he's only scored five runs today. His feet were on fire. They had to go put him in ice. He had to score for first base twice. They had to get him in and get him some oxygen, so he needs a couple innings off. Michael Choice leading it off for Texas. Only been one inning tonight, Matt. That he, no, excuse me, two that the Indians didn't score. They didn't score in the fifth or the seventh. But twice they put three on the board, the first and the fourth. They put four on the board in the eighth, five on the board in the second. I mean, it's just been one of those nights. Season high in runs scored. Five dingers in the ball game. It's it's been one of those nights. It's been fun to watch. Jim McKay line from Wide World of Sports, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. You think about Lottie Chisenhall's night and Michael Brantley's night. That's special. And if you score five runs in a game, that's a special night. You drive in nine runs and tie a franchise record. And hit three home runs. Hit three home runs. That's yeah. a special yes, night. Yes, it is. At the other end of the spectrum, and I mean on the opposite end of the spectrum, Nick Martinez and Scott Baker. Combined for seven innings tonight as that ball is going. Robinson Chirinos and a solo home run. That's his fourth home run of the year. Well, they're saying, hey, you guys can't have all the fun. That was a pitch Carrasco left right there. And he took it. He did what he should with it. He hit it out of here. That's their second home run tonight. Look at that. That was a solid stroke right off the bat. The meat part of the bat. Martinez and Baker combined to go seven innings tonight. And they are charged with all 17 runs and 17 hits. That'll leave a mark on your. Not only on your score sheet, but your psyche, don't you think? Yeah, you go out there, it was a bad night. And, I mean, that happens in this game. The one thing you take away from this game when it's all said and done, it's only one game for the Rangers. It only counts as one loss. It's a fun day for the Indians. And, I mean, it's a great day for a couple of those offensive guys out there like you just mentioned. But they got to come back tomorrow, and they'll be right at it again trying to do the same thing. It's one win. You know, so you don't get too high. We'll be on a plane. That's right. Heading to Kansas City. I mean, it, it's been fun. They win the, the series because they will win three out of four. They lost the first one and win the last three. 
So, I mean, that's what they, they came here to do, accomplish that, to win the series. They, they do that and you move on. Celebrate for a little bit afterwards, and it's uh, time to think about tomorrow. And yeah, and, and tomorrow's a big day because this Central Division is still so tightly packed. I mean, the Royals got rained out today, but they're only right. a, a game back of the Indians. Oh, well, yeah, you get back into your division, and let's see, this is the first time we visited KC this year, so um, yeah, let's go. Yeah, I guarantee those two guys, when we get on the plane, will be thinking about tomorrow. But you still don't take away from the the nights that some of these guys have had. It's been it's been great nights for a few guys. Well, the confidence is starting to pick up for this bunch. You can just oh yes, can tell is. offensively. You know, they've shaken off the malaise that was. You know, a game like this, you, you take away from what T.J. House did. He didn't have a very good start out there, but their offense, you know, picked him back up. Defensively, they made two more errors. You don't think about that stuff, and that's a called third. I didn't even notice that. That's the inning. We'll go to the ninth in Arlington. Indians by 10. Seven home runs hit in tonight's ball game. A total of four thousand eighty-one dollars was raised for prostate cancer research. To make a donation, you can go online to homerunchallenge.org. Lonnie Chisholm. He did oh, more than his share. Of the damage tonight. Huh? He did a lot of. He, he did, did a lot share. of donating. He sure did. Five home runs for the Indians tonight. The Rangers threw a couple in there as well. And we still have the ninth inning to go. George Kateris, who hit one of those home runs to lead it off. Robbie Ross now on a pitch for Texas. Swung out and missed. One down on the ninth. Dan Robertson moved from center over to left. Shinsu Chu out of the ball game. Michael Bourne cuts and misses. Leonis Martin into the ball game in center field now. Out 
outside corner. And the count one or two. Right back by Michael. Right back up the middle. Back in it by Sardinas. Pulled, he pulled the first baseman off with a throw. Might be an infield hit anyway. Yes, indeed. I think it is. The Indians are 18th hit on the night. In-game box score brought to you by your Hyundai dealers. Wow, this is one for the ages. Five for five for Lonnie. Look at that. Two, three, four, five. Three hits each for Cabrera, Brantley, Kipnis. The Terrace out of the nine spot with another home run. Yeah, well, you, you know what uh, we always say when that guy smells a hit. I don't care. It's 17 to 7. And Bourne hit that ball, knowing going to the second baseman's right hand side. He ran, and that was his first hit, so it made him one for five. So he joined the hit parade. He did not want to be left out. No, sir. Nobody does. Bounce to short. The second for one on the first. And ending ending double play. Bottom of the ninth in Texas coming up when the Indians all over the Rangers by 10. Here in Arlington. A historic night for Lonnie Chisenhall and the tribe. As they are about to clinch a series win over the Rangers, taking three out of four. Josh Altman to finish it up. Elvis Andrews to lead it off.
The 0 1 pitch is at the knees, a strike, and it's nothing in two. I understand Elvis Andrews' frustration, but in a 17 to 7 game, anything close, you're, you're not. You're not going to get well, a no, favorable You wouldn't think so. That's in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Mike Pachter went digging through the research. Tells us that since 1914, the only other players besides Lonnie Chisinau to have a five hit game with nine or more runs batted in, including three homers, are Fred Lynn, Gil Hodges, and a guy named Walker Cooper, who played back in the 1940s, I believe. Freddie Lid did his uh, had his game in Detroit. If yep. I'm not mistaken. You're right on, brother. 1975. Uh huh. He had, I think he had 10 RBIs. He did. Swing and a miss. Andrews goes down. Hackens one away. <laughs> Revisiting our keys to the game from Akron Children's Hospital. Indians. With a third straight series win here tonight. And boy, did they have early and early and often yeah, early, offense tonight. Right. They sure did. TJ House had a rough night. He just didn't have he couldn't he couldn't get ahead. He was behind to a lot of hitters. Didn't walk a lot of guys, no. but he was 2 0 2 1. Just a bad night. He had yeah. no command tonight. It was a bad night for him. But if you're going to have one, thank God he did it when the night had the offense. I mean, that's that's another good thing we were talking about. All right, so you don't look at that. You don't dwell on that. That's no big deal. Offense picked him up tonight. When Gil Hodges had his uh, historic night, he had four home runs. But no other extra base hits. Four homers, nine runs batted in. And Walker Cooper uh, had three homers, ten runs batted in. Martin first at bat of the night. Off the end of the bat toward right center field. And Murphy with a diving catch to take a wow. hit away. <laughs> oh, David Murphy caps his return to Texas with some fancy leather work. I'm going to tell you, you didn't think he was going to catch up to that ball, but at the last minute, he goes ahead and he dives after this ball. And I mean to tell you, it is a dandy of a catch right there. Picks it up right before it left, it hit the ground. Good hustle. Nice play. High five from his center fielder. Well done. And with two down, Adrian Beltre to the plate. Two for four tonight. Run batted in, run scored. Really, I mean, he had to come a long way to get to this ball, and he just flat out, that looks like Superman right there. On his belly. High pop on the infield. Kipnis waits under it. He's got it. 
And the Indians win the series in convincing fashion. They dismantle the Rangers tonight by a final score of 17 to 7 as Lonnie Chisinau has one for the ages. He goes five for five with three home runs and a franchise record tying nine runs batted in. And the Indians have won nine out of ten. They go to 33 and 31 on the year. Texas drops to 31 and 33. And the Indians just continue to play very solid baseball. They did have a couple of defensive miscues, didn't have a good start tonight, but the way they swung the bats, it made all that a moot point. So now they'll head to Kansas City for a two game series against the Royals before moving on to Boston for a four gamer against the Red Sox. But right now the focus on the amazing night of Lonnie Chisinau, which brings us to our key bank, key play of the game. Well, this is a night that uh, Lonnie will never forget, along with us as well. It starts off with a single and he drives in a run for the, his first at bat, then a two-run homer going down the line. It didn't end there. Comes up in his very next at bat and gets himself another two-run home run. And you're thinking, my goodness, what a great night he's had. Well, it didn't end there. He went to left center field, hit a double. He battled off a, a, a terrific at bat as Brantley scores one of his five and then comes back up for the capper. Three run homer down the line, nine RBIs, five hits. That's our Key Bank key play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. An incredible night here in the Lone Star State. As the Indians win it, going away 17 to 7 is the final score. We'll greet you tomorrow night from Kansas City as the Indians take on the Royals. But stay tuned for Indians Live because we're going to have some fun looking back on this one.